Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to this special conversation with V. Vaidhanathan, the MD and CEO of IDFC First Bank, one of India's tallest business leaders. Thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Vaidhanathan, when I look at your own arc, right, you've seen India from, um, from multiple lenses as a banker, as an entrepreneur and as a banker again. I mean, you were at the prime at ICICI Bank and then you decided to give it all up one fine day, a uh, startup. What made you do it? Weren't you worried? What, what was going through your mind? Somewhere around 2007, 8, 9, I started feeling that, um, you know, working with a bank, uh, why not, uh, you know, acquire an NBFC hmm. and uh, try to convert it to a bank. I was, I don't know why, I was very, very fussed with that idea. You know, when I talk to founders, right, they always say that it's great to start up in your early 20s, fresh out of college, because you don't have any baggage of success. Uh, you have it in you to, you know, take those hits, take those rejections. But you were someone who was already a very successful executive. You were, you know, at the top of your game then. To give it all up and start up from scratch. No, it's very difficult actually. First of all, I don't call myself entrepreneur and all that stuff. I don't have the kind of stakes which entrepreneurs theoretically have because over time, since the time I started, hmm. uh, maybe 10 odd percent, I got diluted quite a lot by the time today. But that's not the point. Uh, but the point is that, um, yes, it's very hard, very hard. So supposing you're the, you know, on the board of ICSA Bank, you're ED, and you're running, say, maybe 1 lakh, 2 lakh crore loan book and, you know, the whole ecosystem. You know, next morning, you, uh, you know, you get started, you know, you hire, the, you hire a secretary all over again, hire a first one down, hire a two one down. Uh, it, it, is, it is very hard. Give us one or two anecdotes that, you know, you, uh, maybe an episode that you coped with that hit you hard and then you learned from it. Uh, I, I remember once, you know, after, you know, after pitching for maybe like uh, one and a half, two years, one and a half years, finally we got one private equity player to really give us 800 crores, which is a really big money. Uh, at that time, actually, people may forget, people may complain about economy and all that. You know, people are forgetting how 2010, 11, 12 was. It's really bad. You know, rupee was sinking, the, you know, uh, inflation is going up and all that. So we finally got a, uh, you know, something back. And that time we had a process called FIPB. So we hmm. had to go to FIPB for approval for a private equity firm to invest. Hmm. So we went to FIPB. So we went to FIPB. Then FIPB said that, uh, you know, you come in, you can apply. One day before, one day before the FIPB approval, I was, you know, all baited bread to tomorrow I'm getting my approval. Hmm. I got a call from there saying that, you know, I'm sorry, you can't take a proposal. I said, why we can't take my proposal? They said, look, in your company, subsidiary company, there is a property here. Your company owns a property, not in the parent company. So now it means under the look through, the FIP approval has to come for property. So we can't give this approval. Now you figure out how to deal with this. We are deferring this very kind gentleman. He spoke sweetly, but he said, we are deferring it. Now I was like desperate for money. I had finally got the money after like one and a half years. So we said, okay, now how to sell a 100 crore property in a flash? Very difficult. It's a commercial property. Then we put out some advertisements, did some crazy things, etc. Finally, did a fire sale of the property at some funny pri uh, price, but whatever, we sold mm -hmm. it. Then we went back to approval. Mm -hmm. Then that approval went through FIPV, but then the finance minister changed. One, one finance minister went, a new finance minister came. New finance minister has to sign it. Now that process takes time. So it's very hard. In the meanwhile, the heart is in your mouth. If the money does not come, then you know you're cooked. You have so many people to answer to. Answer to. But so it's very hard. You know, hmm. I, I I do think that uh, this this is how it is initially. But then once it takes off, you know, then you feel okay. Even if I look at the share price, I think it went up some eight x from hundred to eight fifty rupees. Was that perhaps the vindication that, you know, all that struggle was worth it? I have delivered value to all my stakeholders. Yeah, of course, you know, people who invest, you have to show them value. You have to deliver value for them, not mm -hmm. through the shortcut method and all that stuff. But you have to gen deliver some real value. So first three, four years, at least my experience was, it is uh, hard because at least in a turnaround company, first three years, you are sitting and plumbing and fixing the roots and all that stuff, blocks. 
But meanwhile, people are saying, hey guys, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, people scream. So you have to go through that process. Uh, but yeah, finally when a stock, you know, I had personally bought the stock at some 160 rupees or something. Mm -hmm. Finally when it touched about maybe 650, 700, I, I sold a block to square my loan because I was myself alone. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, the stock did go up. The funny thing is that of course I'm going through it a second time. Uh, you know, what was that experience now, same experience, first three, four years, difficult time, not that, not that difficult a time like capital first, but still, you know, investors asking questions, go through the process. I believe that that moment does come when things turn around. In fact, I want to ask you about that. I believe you borrowed 70, 80 crore to, you know, buy a 10% stake in the bank. And uh, I mean, that was a, a pretty risky thing to do. No, I, I was very sure. I was very sure. Hmm. I mean, sure. Uh, was it, you know, about <coughs> saying that I have skin in the game as an entrepreneur? Yeah. I mean, not to show, it's really to have, uh, to, how do you create value? You have to have ownership. Hmm. Right? So, and how do you get ownership? So, you have to borrow. So that's how it starts. But I was pretty sure, I was very sure of the model because I knew that India is so much open for business, so much for opportunity. The, the business was not new to me. I've done that for, for, for a long time. Mm. Uh, it's just the start, starting up is difficult and therefore to entrepreneurs or who are startup people who are listening to the program, uh, I must say start is always like that. Don't get disappointed. <laughs> Don't get disappointed and keep at it, you know you see the results but I must ask you you know capital first uh, 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 came up at a time when people were not even talking about uh, unicorns and sunicorns and you know the fancy words we use today so when you look back on that era and now um, how do you think the startup ecosystem has progressed in you know, India? I, you know, I like the term era because uh, yeah, you're right, <laughs> 10 years sounds like an era these days. Uh, right? it, it does for <laughs> India at it, least. It, it really is an era yeah. because you know, yeah. so much has changed. But yeah, I mean, like I gave, gave the example of getting FIPB approval. I don't think there's any FIPB today in the first place. Uh, like that, uh, FDI has been made auto in so many sectors in the country. Uh, the whole ecosystem has come about. For example, now you have uh, credit bureaus, you have Jandhan, you have Aadhaar, you have Biometric, um, uh, you know, AIML, cloud, the whole ecosystem has come alive. I think it's a very different place in 10 years already. And uh, therefore, you know, I heard some startups are these days saying that, okay, guys, want to leave the country, want to work somewhere else and all that, you know, rubbish. They haven't seen how hard it was before. Hmm. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's getting better. Yeah, let me in fact come to that. You know, as you said, so much has changed for the better. But, you know, we still see startups talking about ease of doing business. And as you said, so many have flipped to jurisdictions like Singapore and the US. So ultimately, we've almost become like a back office for some of these unicorns. Um, what would you say to entrepreneurs, you know, uh, in terms of the India story and building in India for India, the reforms so that have come I, I, about? I would actually say that, uh, you know, the process of uh, startups asking for, you know, better and better ease of doing business, etc. is actually a good thing. There mm. should be a demand. There should be you know, uh, people who should push for change and get better. So I, I think it's a good thing. Mm. Uh, but having said that, I would actually say that uh, things have remarkably improved. I mean, you can't even imagine today, can you imagine a world without Aadhaar? Can you imagine a world without UPI? Can you imagine a world without cloud? Can you imagine a world without design? Can you imagine a world without this ecosystem we talked about, AI? So things have so much changed, number one. Mm. Uh, number two, people who say, and first of all, I think it's a harsh statement to say that India has become a ba ba back room mm. for the whole thing. I think mm. some odd cases uh, because the whole startup ecosystem is here. In terms of the reforms done by the government, clearly Startup India, you know, is a big, big program by the government, something that they have been doubling down um, ever since Prime Minister Modi's first term. Um, how do you think that has helped in nurturing the startup ecosystem in the country, you know, ground level impact in terms of the small, big changes, how has it helped? Big way. Uh, you know, we, a country has made, like you said, a hundred unicorns and mm -hmm. probably a hundred more in the queue, mm -hmm. uh, right, and all that. But I tell you, none of these unicorns could have been built, maybe at least 90% of them could not have been built. If India, let me say the government, the RBI, all put coming together to develop the, say, UPI, UPI, the rails. UPI yeah. rails. Think about it. Could you have a great e-commerce company if you did not have UPI rails? You'll probably be doing cash and delivery. Mm -hmm. Could you have a great, you know, uh, a, a pharmacy uh, company, uh, e-pharmacy company, the billion dollars without that? No. Could you have made a, a, a you know, uh, a, you know, medicine uh, uh, unicorn, an education unicorn, uh, let me say a wealth management unicorn? 
all of these things require payment railroads. You need instant, you know, the payment unicorns that have come right now. None of them could have come if the UPI, UPI platform had not come. Hmm. It's just enabled. So I see the role of government not just in giving tax incentives and all that stuff, which is by the way important, but the, 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 under the developing the U ecosystem is a big deal. Hmm. Now, for example, if you see the uh, ONDC is coming. Absolutely. Again, it's a platform. Hmm. Once a platform is built, unicorns can come on top of it. So the role of the government actually has been, not been re really well understood uh, in creating the ecosystem, which I think is very powerful. Do you think that's what sets India apart that, you know, we have focused on building digital public goods on top of which startups can it build? Is, it is the main Whether thing. it is Aadhaar, UPI, as you said, ONDC, and now they're talking about an account aggregator. India is the fifth largest economy in the world. But hmm. We are the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. Let that sink in. Third largest startup uh, ecosystem in the world. That's 77,000 startups and 20,000 every year coming up. So, and, 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 and uh, you know, 100 unicorns. China has, I heard, some 305 or 310 unicorns. So, uh, uh, it's, it's big. So, it could not have come just by entrepreneurial spirit. No doubt Indians have phenomenal entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit and all that stuff. You know, the India's arriving. But all your entrepreneurial spirit could have been useless had the ecosystem not come about. The whole thing we talked about. I also want to ask you, Mr. Badinathan, you know, when we talk about startups and unicorns, um, the focus is a lot on the vanity metrics. What is the valuation? What is your Series D, Series E funding? But beyond this unicorn tag and sunicorn tag, what value do you believe startups are adding to the country? Actual value? It's the efficiency they bring to the system. When you say efficiency? For example, let me say you've got to order a cab. If you didn't have a cab process, the nearest cab is coming to you, saving that much more petrol. If you did not have the process, then maybe somebody from three kilometers away will come to, uh, to you. So it's making the, the algorithms system. are okay. algorithm is making the the system more efficient and saving. Let me say serious uh, 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 dollars for the country. Right, um, efficiency is fine, but you know what areas would you like to see startups emerging from? You know, social sector, impact sector. Let me just say that. Any place where a completely new way of doing business is being discovered, like for example, you, you used to go to the railway station, maybe not you in your generation, but maybe no, in my I generation, <laughs> you go to the railway station and go and stand there in a queue and buy a ticket and all that stuff. But do you do that anymore? You go to IRTC, IRCTC, right? Yeah. Do you used to stand in a queue to buy a maybe a you know, movie ticket once upon a time? So are you doing that anymore? So the whole, pro fundamentally, the process anyway changed. Right? Yeah. You're no longer doing all those things anymore yeah. in life. So, uh, to that extent, everything is bringing efficiency, like we said before. Mm. But the, um, uh, the social sector, mm. not just the business sector, so to say, the social sector is also moving to startups and is also becoming a business, mm. which is very powerful, by the way. If you think social sector, let's think of, say, education sector. It's a social sector. Yeah. But, you know, instead of government taking, the, you know, any government uh, teacher taking a blackboard and scribbling on the board and all this stuff, now it's all gone there. Uh, let me say the health sector is uh, teeming with startups now. Agri-tech also. Agri-tech yeah. is teeming with uh, uh, this one. Sanitation is coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, waste management is coming up. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is also a uh, rural market. You know, how to, how to do seeds and allocate the, you know, you know uh, sow crop and all that. So everywhere, everywhere the startup is, uh, you know, the, the new, let me, I can't say startup ecosystem, mm -hmm. I can say the new digital ecosystem of yeah. which startup is a partner or player in, mm -hmm. the new digital, ex digital ecosystem is playing a huge role. Mm -hmm. So I think social sector too is getting a significant impact. So for aspiring entrepreneurs watching this show today, what would your advice be in terms of, you know, what they should keep in mind when they want to start building a startup because even the product is not ready and you know you're raising money but what should people keep in mind no no i'm no one to give advice and all that but i can only just say that uh, when we start to have a reasonable idea what we want to do like in my case I, you know i said okay fine i want to start an nbfc i want to give loans to these kind of profile of people and will borrow some idea has to be there mm. uh, and have a reasonable sense of where you'll raise funding from reasonable sense you'll never get it you know you'll not, you'll never know it all uh, but that I think is important but more importantly I would say that uh, you know no matter how good your ideas are you're going to have trouble uh, mm. unless you're a rare lucky person uh, and uh, and ability to deal with that it's very much part of that story mm. you know it's it's very hard 
I remember once, uh, you know, it was, just, once it was a very, very horrible time and nothing was moving for a month and a half, two months and all. And, and meanwhile, the, there was some payment due and all a mess. Uh, at that time, you know, actually I remember once that I actually looked at a lift man and, um, and, and uh, it was like 9 o'clock in the night or 10 o'clock, I was coming home and I saw a lift man who was taking me up in the... I said, man, what a lovely, what a lovely life he has. <laughs> it's a lift man, right? I said, man, what a lovely life he has. Hmm. So, I mean, sometimes I'm trying to say that it can be that hard where uh, this one, but people have to go on. Right. Mr. Vadim, you spoke about the immense value that startups bring to India, you know, in efficiency and other areas. What value would you like to bring to the startup ecosystem in India through your bank? So, we have actually come out with the products which, are, which think are attractive. Uh, you know, anyway, our products are all a giveaway product. We don't charge much fees and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But in this case, uh, we have given a three years a zero balance current accounts. Mm -hmm. Costs us money. Often people leave no money, they transact, and it, it sometimes loses money for the bank also. Apart from giving good products, products as such, really, uh, we are working on these programs like uh, we are talking right now, Leap to Unicorn, that yeah. we are now talking with uh, CNBC. So we, we are also coming out of these kind of uh, opportunities. How, how is Leap to Unicorn a differentiator? Because, you know, multiple people run different types of, in, uh, you know, incubators or programs. How is Leap to Unicorn going to be a differentiator? What's the USP? So let me just tell you about Leap to Unicorn itself, yeah. because our yeah. audience may not have heard about it. So what we're doing is that we are actually inviting uh, uh, entrepreneurs mm. uh, to apply for a Leap to Unicorn program. Mm. It's an application for a program. Mm. So under this program, uh, you know, we will, uh, let me say four or five thousand people apply. We will select, say, 400 of them, depending on, so we'll pick, say, 400 of them. And those 400, we'll put them through a proper high quality mentoring program. Mm. So which means that uh, how to pitch for your startup, uh, how to negotiate, how to hire people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these are the typical problems, how, where to sit, how to get started, how to get electricity connections, you know, all that stuff, how to apply for your uh, startup status from the government. Basically, uh, the, the people need all these, uh, how to apply for, fund, uh, how to pitch for funding, uh, where to apply for funding, etc. So we uh, put people through this uh, program. Let me say uh, the 400 selected people, and 400 is a pretty good number who have to yeah, go through a batch like that. Hmm. We will select 20 of them out of that, uh, say 400, and we will actually uh, get them investors to pitch to. Then those out of those 40 odd, we'll pick five of them. So we'll put them through Young Turks program, we'll showcase the case. Mm -hmm. So people who are coming, these four or five thousand people, they means a selected four or five of them will really make it big and uh, get some, it's, it's a really good program. I do believe uh, people will like it. What's your vision, Mr. Vaidyal? Would you love to see, say for example, over the next five years, 25 entrepreneurs who have come from Leap to Unicorn? We all love startups. We have a bit, have a bit of a, let me say all of us in India have a bit of a, you know, love affair with startups these days. Everybody was <laughs> a startup, startup. But the, uh, but uh, we'll be very, very, very happy if some of them turn out to be like wildly successful. Actually, we have uh, our own startup banking program. We call it First Wings, like first hmm. as in the brand name of yeah. a bank, First yeah. Wings. And it's a program, but you don't have to be First Wing customer. You, you can just be anybody and you will get all this for free. Um, if I'm an entrepreneur who wants to pitch to V. Vaidyanathan, give me two tips. First of all, I need to see, in general life, I like to see a great drive in people. You want to have, want to achieve something. And, you know, uh, second thing is that uh, the ideas and the ideation should strike a chord. It should seem to have uh, a reasonable chance at success. Um, and, and thirdly, of course, uh, very uh, honest, ethical people, you can trust them. Uh, because I don't know where you go, otherwise we don't, we can't. So, you know, I, I think these uh, two, three things uh, makes a very big difference, actually. What would you say is your superpower as an entrepreneur? First of all, I don't, I, I told you, I don't call myself <laughs> an entrepreneur. I, I don't take the tags to myself. We are insanely focused, mm. like crazy focused. We don't look left or right. It's just building. We believe we built an amazing bank. India has so much opportunity and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Two is that uh, teams. This is, at least for me, it's worked. Uh, you know, if we build trusting teams where they can trust us, we can trust them. Uh, it makes uh, in a har harmonious working. It makes a big difference when marching to a good beat. 
Uh, I, I'd say these two things uh, that comes to my mind uh, off the cuff. If you were to do a startup today, what what area will you do? Will it still be in fintech, in in financial services? Not really. If I have to do one, uh, mm. let me think. Um, you know, once upon a time, I, I, I recently had a thought that, uh, you know, if we, all of us have, you know, clothes at home, which we never use for months or years together, just lying there, shoes or something. So uh, I'm thinking that, you know, if I can put up a startup, which uh, collects all these things from respect to homes, and by the way, you'll get lots, by the way, in this country, and there will be a number of institutions like NGOs and homes and all that stuff for elderly who will probably need this support. Which can be repurposed. Yeah. Can yeah. be simply directed. Things lying in my home, is a lying home that's just collecting dust, they're doing nothing, maybe in your home, somebody else needs it. I you thinking someday that if you put an app where people can simply come and say, listen, I want to just apply it, and you know, some people say, I want it, and I'm merely putting a platform, maybe the cost of the platform building, but not really, um, a, a lot, so I think that would be a good startup to do. Well, that's an interesting I, I, yes. <laughs> idea. I, I, I can't do anything commercial, my job huh. doesn't permit me. <laughs> right. Um, Mr. Badu and Fali, I want to understand, you know, while we spoke about unicorn and value creation, um, ultimately the aim of uh, starting up and entrepreneurship, uh, you know, it also needs to be about equitable distribution of wealth. And if I've seen your own journey, right? I mean, I, I keep no, reading. No, 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 no. The way I feel is that uh, business itself, hmm. okay, like business, hmm. um, uh, when, when uh, the biggest uh, value add uh, people for, can do for India and for society hmm. uh, actually uh, is um, uh, to, to create new businesses. Yeah. where it creates efficiency, etc. And you're hiring people, and the hiring people, there's a chain of eco economic activity going around that, which is why, you know, these, these uh, startups of 70,000 70, startups are there, and they, they have probably created 7.6 lakh jobs. Absolutely. So that's also, that's also, that's also mm -hmm. inclusiveness. That's also job. That's also ecosystem. So I want to leave it there. But uh, I would say that uh, but startups are more enjoyable, uh, if uh, other people have a stake in it. And, and, uh, and, and then uh, there is some secret goodwill and some happiness for people around who are also participating in that wealth. Let me put it like that. Right. On that note, thank you very much for joining us for this special conversation. Thank you very much. Innovate. Enable.